Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum. This is Amanullah. You're watching my YouTube channel, Dr. Aman's video. Dear viewer, today we are going to discuss Hem and Ellipse Nana or H Nana. So we will discuss the important properties, transmission, pathogenesis, clinical finding, and laboratory diagnosis of the H Nana or Hem and Ellipse Nana. Hem and Ellipse Nana or H Nana is commonly known as dwarf tapeworms, and it is only three to five centimeter long. It is different from the other tapeworms or from the other cystoid because its eggs are directly infectious for human. Ingested eggs can develop into adult worms without an intermediate host. Uh, H Nana, Hem and Ellipse Nana, uh, D Latum. Tinea saginata and Echinococcus granulosis. These are the cystoid. So H nana is different from other cystoid because it does not involve intermediate host for the completion of its life cycle. While they are transmitted from one human, from infected human host to another uninfected human host. And the infection is transmitted from one human host to another human host by the ingestion of the eggs passes in this feces or the stool of the infected human being and these eggs can be ingested in the fecally infected food or fecally infected water. This infection of H. nana cause little damage and most patients are asymptomatic as I told you that the infection of cystoids are usually remain asymptomatic but if the load of the parasite is high then in that cases it results in the symptoms but those symptoms are mild to moderate. Persons with heavy H. nana infection often develop gastrointestinal symptoms such as abdominal pain, anorexia, diarrhea, dizziness and headache. Anorexia is the loss of, uh, loss of appetite, um, diarrhea, dizziness and headaches are easily to understand. The cycle of the H. nana does not involve any intermediate host, so the eggs or the embryonated eggs are passes out in the feces of the infected person and if this embryonated eggs get a chance to be ingested by another uninfected human being in fecally contaminated food or fecally contaminated water then it results in the infection of another person. So this embryonated egg is the diagnostic and as well as the infectious stage. It means that it will work as a diagnostic feature for the detection of the H. nana infection and this embryonated eggs will also act as an infectious agent for the uninfected host. In some cases, this embryonated eggs can be ingested by some insects and the larvae hatches out from these eggs inside the insects and these in, if these insects are ingested by the human being or the rodent, in, this, in that case, it will result in the infection of the human being or the rodent. So it is also the way of transmission of H. nana besides the transmission of eggs in the fecally contaminated food or fecally contaminated water. In the case of H. nana, there is auto-infection. By word auto-infection, we mean that the embryonated eggs usually pass out with the feces of the infected person, but in some cases, if it remain inside the villi of the small intestine, then the larvae hatches out inside the villi of the intestine and this larvae attach to the intestinal wall of the infected human being and it mature or differentiate into the adult worm. So this is the auto infection which occur inside the intestine of the already infected person. As we have discussed that the, um, the, that the discom part is very mild in case of H. nana infection. If there are symptoms then the symptoms are very mild symptoms like uh, the abdominal pain, anorexia, diarrhea and dizziness. So, the laboratory diagnosis rely on the detection of the eggs or ova of H. nana in the, steel, in the fresh stool of the human being or the suspected person. So, the ova of the H. nana will be colorless, oval around in shape, 
three pairs of cochlea are present in the embryo inside the embryo this is the embryo which is present inside the ova so there will be three pair of cochlea you can see this is the one pair of cochlea this is the another pair of cochlea while this is the third pair of the cochlea so these three pair of cochlea or total six cochlea will be present inside the embryo of the H nana at each end of the eggs thread like structures called polar filaments are usually visible you can see on both ends or both pole of the eggs there are filaments which are started from this pole and extend throughout the embryo so in from both poles there are filaments which are starting from this pole and extend towards the embryo and it cover the embryo from both sides and these are known as polar filaments so in case of the eggs of H. nana you can see the polar filaments at both pole of the egg and I would like to ask to request my viewer please subscribe my channel Dr. Aman's video and also hit the bell icon in order to get notification for my upcoming video. If you have any questions or suggestions you can write me at the rate of forum talvi sorry uh, forum talvi at the rate of hotmail.com. Thank you so much for watching my youtube channel Fee Amanillah.